Hi everyone, this is Terry with the Covered Chipboard, and today's video is not so much a construction video, but one more to bring awareness to paper models. Um, there's a lot of people working in miniatures, and I see a lot of comments about it's so expensive, um, house kits to build, and so this is just another option that you have that a lot of people, I think, don't think about because I haven't seen a lot of them done. This is a project from Dreaming Tree. Um, it's 3dsvg.com, and it's called Mother Bates Place. This is what it looks like finished. Hopefully you can see that pretty good. Um, it's a paper um, project. It's all built out of ca or cardstock and um, some vellum for the windows and that type of thing, but nothing expensive. You could buy uh, a 25 sheet pack of white cardstock and build the entire thing out of white cardstock. And then, which is basically what you see here. Um, I have used some black cardstock and some white cardstock and some vellum with, um, or clear plastic with, uh, alcohol ink on it, and then some vellum on the inside. And so basically, you know, I started with old brown cardstock. So the whole entire thing, there is a chipboard piece in the bottom to make it steady. This is like dollar store chipboard that you can pick up anywhere. And then um, I've gone ahead and put siding on it, which is cardstock. These are cardstock from my... Um, this is brick that was embossed cardstock. So um, this is how far I've gotten so far. I'm ready to put do some more painting and put shingles on it and then go ahead and finish up with the porch area. For an SVG, you will need a, a cutting machine like a Cricut Silhouette, Skate and Cut. But the beauty of these paper models is that you can size them as big as you can get them on the mat and as little as you want. So it offers you um, the chance to build a project more than one way. And the SVG files are $5, $6, somewhere in that range. Some are 2 or $3. So, um, but Dreaming Tree is one of my favorite places to go. They have quite a few uh, buildings. Um, another one is SVG Cuts. They also offer houses and structures. So it's something you might want to look into. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, and then um, I'll come back and show some of the steps and the finished product just to give you an idea of what you could do. Again, it's a very inexpensive way to do miniatures, especially if, you, if you're not going to do the inside and you just want the outside facade. <clears throat> this is a very good way to do it. You can even, if I had wanted to, I could have left this back off and added floors inside this. And then it had like a real dollhouse. So, something to think about. Take a look over to Dreaming Tree and check this project out. He also has uh, pieces, an additional kit to go with this. That is Christmas decorations. So, you can turn this house into a Christmas house as well as the Bates house. So that's it for right now. I'm going to go ahead and continue working and I'll be with you shortly. Thank you. Okay, so I've had a lot of questions about how I did the shingles and the siding for the Bates house. So I thought I would do a quick little how-to here. Um, on how I did that. So here we go. I'm just going to do it on a little scrap piece of paper. These are the materials I'm using quick dry tacky glue. Don't use hot glue on projects like this because it'll lump and um, you'll get lumps showing through your cardstock. And that's not nice. Um, I've got two paint brushes. I have a flat one for just the base coat. And then for dry brushing, I like these stencil brushes because they don't leave a, a straight line. So, and then I've got um, 
just quarter inch strips of black card stock. And I have my shingles cut out. These are hexagon shaped shingles. I don't know if you can tell the shape or not, but so I have a few of those. I have a paint mixing tray. This is an old cap from a um, uh, hair, hairspray can that I'm gonna use to make a wash. And then I've got acrylic paints. I've got just a variety. I normally use folk art, multi-surface, but I don't always have all those colors. So I've got a vintage white, a coffee latte, uh, coffee bean, white and black. So let's get started. Um, the Bates House is an SVG file. I think I said this in the earlier part of the video, but it's an SVG file from Dreaming Tree. The whole entire project was cut out of black or brown cardstock, AC cardstock. It does have a little texture to it. And uh, there is a link for that in my supply list on my blog. And then, um, let's see, I used uh, foam core for the very bottom base, which is up inside the house. I did cut extra files of the front, back, and the sides to slip inside. I just basically cut those those pieces out of the SVG file again, a second time, and uh, trimmed off all of the tabs. <clears throat> and I cut it out of 100 pound white um, smooth cardstock and glued that inside just to give it more of a solid structure. You don't have to do that, but I prefer to do it because I think it makes it sturdier. When you go putting all this paint on the cardstock, it's of course wet, and so it gets a little flimsy, but once the paint dries, it hardens all back up again. But I still like that extra bit of stability and strength that the inside piece gives you. Um, I used clear acrylic on the windows. I painted those with um, alcohol ink. And um, I may show that at another time, or there are other, other videos on my blog that show me doing that, if you're interested in that. So, um, I guess I'll just get started here. For the siding, <clears throat> I normally just buy black, white, gray and brown cardstock. I don't really use a lot of color colors because I wind up painting most everything. So for this, I'm just going to, oops, get my glue lid over here. Oops, glue this on. And I would cover the whole structure with this. And I tend to leave a little gap between the pieces. It may not always be an even gap. If you get glue on your strips, don't worry about it. We're gonna paint it, it'll cover it up. And my husband's mowing, so I'm sorry. And sometimes I'll put them on crooked like this. And I just keep going until I cover the whole structure. And of course, you'll have to trim it as you go. I'm not doing that here. Sometimes I'll overlap them. Just kind of stagger what you do. Do them, you know, in a straight line, sometimes with a bigger gap, sometimes with a smaller gap. I just kind of haphazardly do this. I don't try to be real neat with it. Now, if you're doing something that's not like a haunted house and you want it to be pristine looking, then of course you would be more careful. But for the bait, what I'm doing 
So that would be the siding. As for the shingles, the same thing. I'm gonna tear this in half. And you start with your first shingle on the bottom of the roof. And then start moving your way up the roof line. And you want to stagger these. So wherever there's a rounded point, you want to find the, the split area between two shingles, and you want the second row or each row to be staggered. Just like that. Hopefully, you can see that. I didn't get that one glued very well, but. So we'll just put a few of these down. And again, I'm going to stagger this. I try to keep these as straight as I can and as evenly placed as I can. There again, it's not going to really show up a whole lot if you aren't perfect with it. But I do like to try to keep an even space with each one as you go. I'll put two more on here. The beauty of these SVG files is that you can pretty much create them out of any material that your machine will cut. And you can size them up or down. I did size baits down just about an inch. Um, but you could make it really big or really small. It's just how much your, um, your machine will cut, the size that your machine will cut. So you wanna let that dry for just a few minutes. I'll start here with the siding. So once everything's done, I completely cover everything in a coat of black paint. Now, if that's because I'm doing a haunted house. If you're not doing a haunted house, you might wanna use a different color. If it's a light, if you're going light colors, you might wanna coat it all in white. So I'm just gonna paint this on and I want to make sure that I get down in all those little cracks where we've skipped the, not left a big line between or left a space between. You don't have to be really neat with this part. And this just gives a base for all of the other colors we're going to put on here. Also going to paint the shingles black. And I need some more paint. And with shingles, you want to make sure that you get down inside there If you leave fine little spots once it's dry that you didn't get paint on, that's not a huge ordeal either, but you try to get as much as you can. So there's our base coat. I'm gonna let that completely dry because you can't dry brush on top of wet paint. So it doesn't take very long. And this, you'll notice when you do this, it because it's wet, it's going to make your project wet. 
and it will warp a little, but don't worry about that because once it dries, it will dry flatter and stiff. It won't be wobbly or pliable. And it's pretty strong once you get done. I mean, it's it's pretty sturdy for, for cardstock. Um, it's not indestructible, but it is pretty, you can see, it's pretty sturdy. Um, one thing I did while we're waiting for this to dry is on these little posts, I wanted some dimension to them, and I wanted to be able to see these little pieces here, so I used liquid glass and just did a little line across it, let it dry, and then once everything's done, I always spray seal everything with a matte spray, and so it took the gloss off of these, but you can see it shows lets the painting underneath show through. And I just thought it added just a little extra touch. The only other thing that I did on here was I added a little flat back gem here for the door handle. Um, hindsight, I wish I had put these, the, the um, plastic between the curtains here and the window, but I already had that in so I couldn't change it. I'm going to make a Christmas version of it as well, so I'll remember that hopefully when I get to that point. So this is dry enough that it's not coming off. Um, so my next step would be, I, you wanna work from dark to light when you dry brush. So I'm gonna use a little bit of, now on the siding I use gray. Let me grab a gray. Okay, so I've got a medium gray and a light gray. Um, actually, I picked up Prairie Sage. Sorry about that. So here's my medium gray. Let me grab this light gray. Okay, it's a pale gray. So I'm gonna use my medium gray first. And I'm just gonna use just, I won't need very much. And if you don't have a medium and a pale gray, I'll not use this and I'll show you what you can do. Then I want a paper towel. I'm gonna fold it up a couple of times, like a little pad, a little working pad. I'm gonna dip my brush in here and then pat most all of it off. Then I'm just going to take this and do long strokes. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get the look that I want. And you can see how some of the texture will show up in the um, the cardstock. And you might put more in some areas than others, depending on how distressed you want it. So that's lightened it up quite a bit. Now for a lighter gray, if you don't have a light gray to use, just add a little bit of white into your gray. And you can keep mixing this in. Very light touch. You just kind of letting the bristles just kind of flow off. I went pretty light on mine. So there we go. And like I said, you could keep going lighter and just keep applying layers until you reach the the desired look that you want. Now, once that, once I did that, I took some of the shingles and took a pair of tweezers and kind of tore them. 
or cut them so that it looked like and bent them up or down. You could also have one that's um, completely missing or you can just kind of do that with it and let it stand up. Just kind of play with it until you get the look that you want. Once that's all done, I use some, this is my paint water and I just use my paint water. Let me find the right brush, here we go. So I'm gonna take just a tiny bit of paint I'm gonna keep adding my paint water to it. Doesn't matter what color your paint water is until I get it really, really watery. So that's just like water. Then you take this, another paper towel that you've wadded up, wherever you want some darkened areas or like if the bat's showing through and I just kind of dab it. And that gives you your This will start to dry on you, so you may need to add a little bit more water to it. And that's all I'm doing. If you make it really super watery and you use a thicker brush, you can roll it at the top and let it drip down. But that's just kind of how you get your, your darker areas. And just keep playing with it like that until you get the look that you want. If you don't like it, you can always come back and repaint the whole thing and start over again. So that's how he did that. The shingles work pretty much the same way. I'm going to use some brown. This is my dark brown. Actually, it's my, yeah, that's my dark brown. I'm not even going to um, clean my brush. I'm just going to go right into this brown. And you want to work up. So that gives you the, you see where I didn't clean my brush out? I'm getting some of that black in there. Now that's what happens if you get too heavy, but that's okay. We'll fix that in a few minutes. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of this gray and come through. And then we wanna let that dry for a few minutes. And then it, you could take this coffee latte, which we'll, I think we'll use some of that. It's just a more of a gold brown it also doesn't take a whole lot of paint to do this. And just keep building your layers up. <clears throat> And now I'm gonna add some of this. And I'm rushing this for the video, but normally, do I help me get any of this to come out? Normally I would let this completely dry. Because if you don't, your colors tend to mix.
So now you can see some of the lighter colors coming in. And then I might add a little bit of white to that cream color. When you get to the white, you might want to um, clean your brush out or start with another one. And then this is just sporadic, very light touch. And that's it. And you just keep working with this until you get the look that you want. Once you've got the look that you want, you uh, just let it dry completely. If you want to, then you can also take the black wash and add black wash to darken some of the areas. And then take your um, tweezers and just kind of, so you can see the white through here. But, like I said before, if you do a um, your cardstock, start with, if you're going to have a light-colored house, use a light-colored cardstock when you build your structure. If you're going to use dark colors, like on the Bates, you would want to start either with a black or a very dark brown cardstock. So that way, when you do stuff like this, only the black or brown would show through underneath. Just pick some up here and there. You can completely remove some if you want. And at this stage, it's still just a little damp, so it makes it easy to pull these up. And this was that piece where it got real heavy, so I'm gonna just do that. And that's all there is to it. There's your siding. There's your shingles. They've been torn up. Um, you just keep doing your dry brushing until you get the look that you want. This is still wet, so it's kind of... And that's all there is to it. And that's how I did the whole entire Bates house, was a lot of dry brushing. So I hope that explains and answers your questions. If not, feel free to, to text me. I'm online almost all the time. Um, and I'm happy to help or show you something specific if you need to see how I did something. That's it.